America's number one all-purpose flour, and Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, present June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. All right, Joyce, no more stalling. It's time you started helping your mother with the cooking. But, Dad, I wouldn't know where to start. You start with this. A Betty Crocker recipe. They come in each sack of gold medal flour. Gee, Dad, there are six different recipes on this folder. Sure, sort of a miniature Betty Crocker cookbook. Look, Dad, here's that dreamy new chiffon cake. Tender, flaky stir and roll biscuits. A delicious chocolate cream pie. And three other wonderful bakings. What do we have? Heck, let's try them all. I'm hungry. <laughs> Betty Crocker recipes are changed frequently in sacks of gold medal kitchen tested enriched flour. Each recipe is specially developed to take advantage of gold medal's superb uniform baking qualities. Ask for gold medal. Use it with Betty Crocker recipes. It's the perfect combination for perfect bakings. Sure of what, Jackie? Somebody was outside our window last night. Oh, you're imagining things. How would you know? You were asleep. And when you're asleep, a crook could come in and steal your bed, and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> you could have been mistaken, dear. Mm, Jackie might be right. There are some footprints underneath their window. I told you I heard somebody. Uh, it's possible. There have been some robberies in the neighborhood. The Edwards house was robbed last night. The crook was probably casing our joint first. He found it too tough to crack and picked an easier heist. Such language, Jackie. Where did you ever learn it? I read the funnies every day. Well, it'll be better if you paid a little more attention to your schoolwork, young lady. Come on, you two. Hurry up. Get your books. Bye, Mom. Bye, dear. Mother. Yes, Joyce. When is oculation permissible? Well, what do you mean, dear? Huh? Well, I've been going practically steady with Drexel now for almost three years, and... I think he wants to kiss me goodnight when we come home. Oh, I see. That is a problem. Well, we're going out tonight to a dance, and I will have to say goodnight to him. Should I let him kiss me? Well, uh, that's entirely up to you, Joyce. If you like him and think you should, well, that's one decision you're going to have to make for yourself. I suppose so. All the responsibilities of being an adolescent. <laughs> well, bye, Mom. Bye, darling. Uh, I went with you for three years, and you didn't kiss me either. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. You were afraid to. No, I think maybe I was. <laughs> <laughs> you're late, dear. No, let me finish my coffee. You won't forget you're going to the luncheon tomorrow. What luncheon? The Tuesday Club. Tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, the Tuesday Club hasn't met on Tuesday for over a year now. Oh. Antoine Francois, the noted art authority, is going to show some paintings and give a lecture. Mm, well, I will if I have to. You know, these robberies have me worried. Maybe we ought to put in a burglar alarm system. Oh, please don't build anything else. It's our duties as citizens to make it difficult for thieves to flourish. I think putting in an alarm would be a good idea. Put the stuff over there, will you? Mr. Irving, hmm? you sure you know what you're doing? It's as simple as ABC. ABC wasn't simple for me. <laughs> oh, Stu, I'm so glad you're home. I'm having so much trouble. What's the matter? The speech. I don't know what I'm going to say. What speech? What are you talking about? The Tuesday Club. Oh, the one that meets on Saturday. Oh, don't be funny. This is serious. You'll just have to help me write a welcoming speech for Antoine Francois. Well, why do you have to write a speech? I thought that was Mrs. Smith's job. Mm, Mrs. Smith has the flu. Mrs. Jones can't do it because she just had a new baby and Mrs. Howard's in New York. As I'm third vice president, they made me chairman of the welcoming committee. Congratulations. Please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> why is the Tuesday Club meeting on Saturday and still... Really, that is something only a woman can explain. Oh. Come on, we'll wire the upstairs windows first. Yes. <coughs> There's something getting mixed up here. It's a week behind two. Willie. Days. How are we doing, Mr. Evans? Fine. Two more windows and we'll be finished upstairs. I'll need a little more wire. Yes. Now, what did you do that for? You have to listen to my speech. 
Oh, oh, all right. Dear members of the Tuesday Club, today is a special occasion for our honored guest is none other than the celebrated Antoine Francois. It must be caught on the other side. I'll go on the other side and fix it. Noted lecturer and collector of modern painting. It, it's too short. Too short? I just started. Oh, I didn't mean you. I meant Willie. He's on the other end of this wire. You and your doodling. Do please listen. I want your reaction. I'm not doodling. Someday you'll be glad to have a burglar alarm. Believe me. Oh, it's longer, Willie. It's... A graduate of the Sorbonne. He's a member of the great... Will you stop pulling on that wire and listen? Uh, I'm listening. Uh, he's a member of what? Oh, something or other. That's as far as I've gone. How does it sound? Well, cut out about four pages and it'll be fine. Four pages? It's only three pages long. Well, that's what I meant. Too short! Do I wish you'd cooperate? Oh, do I ask you to help me with the burglar alarm? No. Besides, I hate modern painting. I like a tree to look like a tree. Come on, Willie, get that wire down here. I'm coming, Mr. Irvin. Now you've got it too loose. What are you doing up there, Willie? Stop fooling around and get to work. I'm not fooling, I'm hanging, Mr. Irvin. Oh, Willie, Willie, hold on, I'll get the ladder over to you. You better hold on, I hold on my tongue. Yeah, get it over there, Willie. Oh. Get on it. Come on down from there. Am I going right, Mr. Irvin? Fine, Willie. Next, we'll make the connections to the fuse box. Why don't we just use this wall plug? It's much shorter. No, this is purely a professional job, Willie. Nothing but the best. Stu. Huh? Oh, June, can't I listen to that speech tonight? Stu, I just found out. Adele told me. She called Mrs. Harrigan and Mrs. Pine told her. Everybody told who? What? They didn't order the luncheon for tomorrow. Well, that's simple. Order it. But what shall I order? You can't serve a man like Antoine Francois just anything. <laughs> My wife worked for a Frenchman once, and he liked a hamburger. Hamburger. That's fine. Give him hamburger, french fries, the works. Show him how America eats. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now, what shall it be? Chicken in a patty or roast beef? Well, as long as I have to be there, make it roast beef. Roast beef? You know that's too expensive. <laughs> all tacked down, Mr. Irvin. Oh, fine. Now we'll make the connections that are all set. Here, hold this, Willie. You sure you know what you've done? That's hot stuff in there. Duck soup. All we have to do is find the right one to connect it to. See? Uh, they all look the same to me. What's this doing in here? Hold it, Willie. I need a screwdriver. Look out. Get off the tools, Willie. Get over. Come on. Get over a little bit. Oh, oh Willie, stop clowning around. We have work to do. Good grief. Oh, Willie. Willie. My goodness. You have to be careful. That's electricity. I am careful. These wires don't care who's holding them. Well, get out of the way now. Here. There, let me have it. Let me have that wire. What'd you do with it? Oh, here. Ah, goodness sakes, Willie, you didn't get electrocuted. Let's see here. Please tell me this to when I wish to see her. Why, that's me. I mean, I'm Mrs. Irwin. Oh, oh mais oui. Oh, how foolish of me. I'm uh, Monsieur Antoine Francois. Mr. Francois? But you weren't supposed to arrive until tomorrow. I thought the Tuesday Club had made arrangements. Oh, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was intrigued, so I came quickly. Oh, well, won't you come in? Mais certainement. Pardon. Lovely, lovely. A sweet, sweet chateau. I can see you are a lady of discernment, taste. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Mrs. Irwin. Well, thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> oh, uh, uh, for a moment I thought you, he was your husband. 
You know, American husbands can make trouble sometimes. They don't understand our quaint French ways. Hmm? Would it be better for a workman to knock at the door before entering? Oh, oh. This is my husband, Mr. Francois. No. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm glad to know you. <laughs> America. In my country, things are so different. Here, I don't know who are the husband and who are the workers. In America, mister, when you're a husband, you got to work twice as hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Darling, Mr. Francois arrived earlier than we expected. Oh? You know, of course, that the luncheon isn't until tomorrow. I mean, it is tomorrow. Oh, yes, of course. But, but I came in a hurry to rest and be at my best for the fair ladies of your lovely city. What hotel are you staying in? Uh, hotel? Well, I came directly from the Santa Fe station. I, I don't know of no hotel here. Well, uh, I think maybe I can get you into the commercial. Will you stick around? We'll try it out when I come back. Yes. I'll change my clothes and drive you down. Uh, hotel? Well, uh, I hardly know what to say. Uh, do you think my, my, my painting will be saved there? Well, we'd love to have you stay here if you'd like to. Oh, but uh, I would hate to inconvenience you. Oh, no inconvenience at all. As acting chairman of the Tuesday Club, I think it's my duty to make you as comfortable as possible. Oh, you are a gracious lady. <laughs> and your painting will be perfectly safe here. Stu, I mean, Mr. Irwin has just put in a burglar alarm system. Burglar alarm? Oh. Oh, all by yourself? Uh-huh. <laughs> Such an intricate mechanism. Oh, you must be very brilliant. Oh, well, we had our difficulties. <laughs> we sure did. I almost got executed. <laughs> oh, we just connected it. I'll show you how it works. Now the system is on. If anyone tampers with a door or opens a window, the alarm goes off. I'll show you. Watch. A burglar alarm? I must have connected it to the wrong thing. I... Willie, come on, we'll fix it. <sighs> Mr. Francois, may I show you to your room? <laughs> Thank you. We'll return to the Irwins in just a moment. Hi there, I'm Mike Fitzmorris. Broadcasting these games for you, I get to watch lots of champs. And you know what sparks a champion sparks you. And champions choose Wheaties. Look, I'll show you what I mean. That's one of the great champs of the game. Pick a big one, boy. This one's got to count. It's the last of the night. Yes, it's Ralph Kiner. And he can win the game for the Pirates if he can connect. Wait it out, boy. Here's the pitch. It's a hit. Going, going. It's gone. It's into the stands for a home run. That's what I mean. The spark of a champion. Wheaties man Ralph Kiner in action. He powers up with Wheaties. And what sparks a champion sparks you. There's that same driving power for you in Wheaties with milk and fruit. Ready to spark you at whatever you do because... There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Every Wheaties flake you eat builds up your wheat power, gives you energy to burn the solid, lasting energy of rich whole wheat. Depend on it. Wheaties give you all the grain because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Don't be satisfied with less. Remember, what sparks a champion sparks you. And champions choose Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. And now, back to the Irwins. So you see, my uh, lecture tomorrow will deal mainly with the French school of painting. Excuse me, I think I left a wire loose in the living room. <laughs> uh, you don't mind, do you, dear? Of course not. No. Uh, such a dinner. Magnifique. No, just roast lamb. I didn't have time to prepare anything special. You just had potluck. Potluck? What is potluck? It just means you were lucky there was anything in the pot. Oh. Beautiful American housewife. Well, I'm a busy one anyway. Shall we join the others? Oh, certainly. Do I think you better stop working on that thing now? <laughs> First, it was the fuse box, then it was a bad connection the store sold me, and then Willie crossed the wire. Well, in France, uh, electrical work is made by a uh, Electrician. Oh. Not if Stu lived in France. <laughs> well, if I do say so myself, I did a pretty good job on this alarm. It'll work perfectly now. 
Yeah. Now all we need is a burglar to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a jolly, uh, oh, I mean, uh, such a pretty young lady. You do not have a date, but such a beautiful evening? Oh, I have one, all right, but I have problems, too. What's troubling you, dear? It's the same thing we talked about this morning. You know, kissing. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm sure you will make the right decision. Yeah. Say, perhaps Mr. Francois could give me some advice. Oh, Joyce, I don't think you should bother Mr. Francois. But I'm a guest, no? <laughs> Just like someone of the family, yes? Well, Mr. Francois, do you think it's all right if a girl lets a boy kiss her? Oh, mais oui, certainly. Constantly. Uh, uh, Joyce, uh, there's Drexel. Uh, well, uh, do you think it's proper? Proper? Isn't love always proper? <sighs> to be in love. <coughs> Joyce, I mean, you wouldn't keep Drexel waiting, would you, dear? Well, I I'll think about your advice. You think it out for yourself. Good night. Have a good time, dear. Uh, thanks, Mother. You're very sweet, Mr. Francois. Both Mr. Irwin and I are very interested in art. We are? I mean, we love artistic things. Tell us, what do you think of the Impressionists? The Impressionists? Oh, the Impressionists. These are my very favorite. Monet, Picasso, Coro. I consider the immortals of our time. The light, the color, the, the charm, the atmosphere. Uh, June, honey, I was thinking maybe Mr. Francois would like to take a little ride around our town. It's rather pretty at night. Well, that's up to Mr. Francois. Oh, but I am amenable to anything you desire. I'll get the hats and coats. No, some people may uh, disagree with my opinion on the Impressionist. Some may say it is a retrogression. Well, I consider those critics uh, fools and knaves. Something uh, rich and full has been added to our life. A cafe seen by money. Oh, a riot of life and light and color. The Tatian mountains by Gauguin. Oh, the skies, the clouds, the greens, the blues, the violets. Shall we go? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Oh, how about you, Jackie? You want to take a ride with us? Not me. I don't like the Impressionists. I prefer the old masters. Do you know the difference? No, but I'll string along with you, Pop. As I said before, Monet is my true love. Monet uh, seems to have caught beauty and exquisite charms in almost everything he painted. I'll take, for example, this Gar Saint Lazare at the Luxembourg Museum. You see how I unlock this door? Uh, first, I turn the key this way before I open it so the alarm doesn't ring. If I turned it the other way, the bell would wake up the whole neighborhood. On the other hand, Monet's treatment of the Rouen Cathedral is a classic, a sheer joy to behold. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Joan, I told you it would work. Your paintings are as safe as in a vault. Fine, I'm very happy. <laughs> oh, I told you all about uh, Monet, Picasso, but I have not yet touched on the other great geniuses. Mm, maybe you'd better save some of that for the luncheon tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Irwin means after your trip you must be tired, and maybe you'd like to get some rest. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a trifle tired. <laughs> I was not aware of it. No. Oh, pardon me. I sleep very well. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll bet that guy snores with an accent. Stu, you should have more respect. <laughs> Mr. Francois is a very cultured man and a perfect gentleman. Mm, Pardonnez-moi. Honest. <laughs> Imagine a woman at your age. I'm not an antique yet. No, but old enough to get wise to that hand kisser. Charmed, charmed, magnifique, baloney. Good night, Stu. Good night. What happened? Arm wires do. Huh. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, yes. Hi, 
I got him, I got him. Me, Brock, where'd I go? Oh, it's you, Jackie. Well, you better go upstairs. There's a burglar around here. No, there isn't. Henrietta here is the one that caused it. She jumped on the windowsill in the living room. Oh, well, it's a good alarm, all right. Sensitive to anything. Try for too sensitive, monsieur. Good night. Any trouble, Mr. Irwin? Uh, no, uh, we thought there might be something wrong, but it was just Henrietta. I mean, uh, nobody. I see. They got me detailed to this district now. Call me again if you notice anything. Yes. Too many robberies around here? Yes. Come on, Buck. Thank you, officer. I should think you'd have a little more consideration for our guests. Consideration? How did I know Henrietta was going to sleep on the windowsill? But you don't understand, Stu. I'm chairman of that luncheon tomorrow. If he isn't wide awake and doesn't give a wonderful speech, I'll be the failure. Okay, okay. Good night. Thanks, Joyce. Swell dance, wasn't it? Oh, it was super. Gosh, Drexel, I think you dance like a dream. Thanks. I think you look like one. It's awfully nice of you to say that. Gosh, I mean it. Well, good night, Joyce. Good night, Drexel. Well, it's awfully nice, Joyce. Good night. Drexel? Yeah? You can kiss me if you like. Gosh, you mean it? Oh, boy. Oh. Some kiss. Boy, I hear bells. Me, too. Hello, police department. Come right over. Walker. Walker. What's going on here? Nothing. Nothing at all, Mr. Irwin. <laughs> Good night. Stu, you knocked Mr. Francois out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I'm sorry, Mr. Francois. Are you all right? All right, he says. My head, my back, my feet. I'm ruined. I'm leaving this house at once and the city tonight. Oh, please, Mr. Francois. It was just an accident. Please reconsider. The Tuesday Club's depending on you. It would be awful if you didn't appear. Well, uh... All right, uh, I stay. Thank you. That was a nasty thing to do. What did I do now? Ring all those bells while Drexel was kissing me. But I didn't. Oh, you don't understand about true love. I should have been born in France. It is a wonder in America anyone can fall in love. You and your burglar alarm. Poof! Oh, now, look. I... Oh. I'll never forgive you, Father. Never. Neither will I, Stu Irwin. Oh. I'm still for you, Pop. Thank you. The doorbell, Dad. Hmm? Doorbell. Oh, oh yes. Thank you. Oh. Huh. We got your call, Mr. Irwin. Where is he? It was all a mistake, officer. Hmm? My daughter just got kissed. What? I mean, uh, Anton was going. Uh, I, uh, good night, officer. Listen, Mr. Irwin. Make sure, will you? Make sure the next time. This uncertainty is killing me. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Just making sure this alarm won't ring again. I'm going to get some sleep. You, you've ruined it. And you almost ruined the Tuesday Club luncheon. Good night. something downstairs. I think it's the burglar. Oh, you're hearing things. I'm sure of it. Go on downstairs and see. It's your imagination. Hey, I think you're right. Call the police. Hurry.
I think I heard something. So did I. Somebody downstairs. It's all right, girls. You stay here. I'll get him. Put up your hands. Mr. Francois. What are you doing down here? Well, there must be some mistake. There's no mistake, Mrs. Irwin. This is French Louis, a mug with a new racket. During the day, he lectures to women's clubs. But at night, he's a second story artist. He was casing the giant, wasn't he? Yeah, that... What? Yeah, yeah, he was. Okay, Louis, get going. Come on. Thanks, Mr. Irwin. The department will be a lot happier with that crook on the inside. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Hmm? You're here. Oh, Dad, you're wonderful. Mm, nothing at all, kids. Just doing my duty. Go ahead now. You get to bed. Oh, wait till I tell the kids at school about it tomorrow. Coming to bed, dear? Darling, I'm sorry. What about? You were so right. I'll never be fooled by another hand kisser the rest of my life. <laughs> and I have a wonderful idea for the luncheon tomorrow. I know. Call it off. No. You're going to give the lecture. Me? Uh -huh. Yes. You're going to tell them all about the way you caught the notorious French Louis. Me? No, no. No, no, madame. No, no. See these two delicious pies? Well, each is made with gold medal flour, but in an entirely different way. The lady on the left is using the old-fashioned method. The one on the right is using Betty Crocker's new stir and roll method, perfected with gold metal flour. Notice how, in the stir and roll method, you don't cut in solid shortening. You just add milk to liquid shortening and stir into the bowl with gold metal flour. And what a dramatic difference when it comes to rolling out. Just place stir and roll dough between sheets of waxed paper. Now, here are the two finished pies. And believe me, both are delicious. But you saw right before your eyes how much, much easier the stir and roll method is. You'll find Betty Crocker's stir and roll recipe easy to get, too. Just reach into your sack of gold medal kitchen tested enriched flour or write to Betty Crocker, General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Betty Crocker recipes in gold metal sacks are tailored to fit the superb baking qualities of this dependable flour. Use them together. It's your easiest, surest, simplest way to baking success. Be with us again next week when Gold Medal, America's number one all-purpose flour, and Wheaties Breakfast of Champions present Trouble with Father. Doak Walker says they're the best ever. Sam Sneed loves them. Yes, champions say new Wheaties are better than ever. Know why? Because new Wheaties are super flaked. Made a new way to give you bigger, brighter, better whole wheat flakes. Get new Wheaties. Try them. Champion. Gold medal. America's number one all-purpose flour. And Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Present June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. All right, Joyce. No more stalling. It's time you started helping your mother with the cooking. But, Dad, I wouldn't know where to start. You start with this. A Betty Crocker recipe. They come in each sack of gold medal flour. Gee, Dad, there are six different recipes on this folder. Sure, sort of a miniature Betty Crocker cookbook. Look, Dad, here's that dreamy new chiffon cake. Tender, flaky stir-and-roll biscuits. A delicious chocolate cream pie. And three other wonderful bakings. What do we have? 
Heck, let's try them all. I'm hungry. <laughs> Betty Crocker recipes are changed frequently in sacks of gold medal kitchen tested enriched flour. Each recipe is specially developed to take advantage of gold medal's superb uniform baking qualities. Ask for gold medal. Use it with Betty Crocker recipes. It's the perfect combination for perfect bakings. I'm sure of it, Mother. Sure of what, Jackie? Somebody was outside our window last night. Oh, you're imagining things. How would you know? You were asleep. And when you're asleep, a crook could come in and steal your bed, and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> you could have been mistaken, dear. Mm, Jackie might be right. There are some footprints underneath their window. I told you I heard somebody. Uh, it's possible. There have been some robberies in the neighborhood. The Edwards house was robbed last night. The crook was probably casing our joint first. He found it too tough to crack and picked an easier heist. Such language, Jackie. Where did you ever learn it? I read the funnies every day. Well, it'll be better if you paid a little more attention to your schoolwork, young lady. Come on, you two. Hurry up. Get your books. Bye, Mom. Bye, dear. Mother. Yes, Joyce. When is oculation permissible? Well, what do you mean, dear? Huh? Well, I've been going practically steady with Drexel now for almost three years, and... I think he wants to kiss me goodnight when we come home. Oh, I see. That is a problem. Well, we're going out tonight to a dance, and I will have to say goodnight to him. Should I let him kiss me? Well, uh, that's entirely up to you, Joyce. If you like him and think you should, well, that's one decision you're going to have to make for yourself. I suppose so. All the responsibilities of being an adolescent. <laughs> well, bye, Mom. Bye, darling. Uh -huh. I went with you for three years, and you didn't kiss me either. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. You were afraid to. No, I think maybe I was. <laughs>